you guys going? Kill me four. Yeah, fuck shot. We're gonna punch Woo. straight at you. Yeah! Just well, kidding. No, but... We can't put that in the movie. has encountered a world-altering event. For this generation, Y2K had the potential of becoming one of these milestones. In 1999, many incidents seemed to point to a possible millennial catastrophe. It's, this has kind of been like the brain fart, if you will. <laughs> it's like we've all been sitting in a room talking about what we could do to make a movie, right? We're all here to make a movie. And so, most, mostly, uh, we had a lot of bad ideas, and then we had one good idea. It's about um, kind of a teenage view of the world and what all is going to change and kind of what was going to happen with the millennium and hopes and fears for the future. It may be set um, on the eve of the year 2000, but that's not really what it's about. Uh, that's just kind of a... Uh, it's, it's just sitting in the background there, so it's an excuse to uh, get up and interview um, all the kids that we want to and get their ideas about the future. Hey, we were wondering if we could interview you for an independent film about the millennium. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, have you guys done anything to prepare for the millennium? Nope. No. <laughs> what do you think about the whole deal with uh, the year 2000? Crap. My mom thinks it's just a bunch of crap. And my friends, we don't ever talk about that. We talk about other things. So. What are you doing for the year 2000? <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Okay. I'm looking forward to kissing somebody, hopefully. <laughs> right on. I'm trying to raise as much hell as I can. Riots, a lot of riots. And I bet, you know, when the comet came, I bet there's like mass um, suicides. Yeah. I think that everybody's pretty much taking a lot of precaution for the millennium. Right now everything's pretty calm and if something were to happen it probably would have already. So oh, everybody is going to go and take out all their money from the bank and all the banks will collapse. Only God knows when the world is going to end and um, I hope not. I hope not. We're just like encouraged to have two years of food storage. I think we have enough for like about one year. So you know just in case. For the millennium. I've got food, I've got water. Party it up and have fun. Live life to the fullest, as you should do every day. What do you think the future's going to be like after the millennium? I think it's just going to continue on um, at the pace that we are going now. I don't know, I try not to look that far ahead. We're going to get so ahead of our technology that it's going to all turn against us. On some things we're ahead of our time, and some things we're behind, but we're soon they're going to try to get everything in one momentum, and then I believe it's just going to turn on them. Before computers even came, like, were even invented, we did okay. We got along. We're probably going to have, like, hovering cars or something. I think we'll have fucking portable hover cars and shit. Yeah. 
Like on the Jetsons. What do you think, Eric? About what? About what'll change in the year 2000. I think it's gonna be fucking total chaos. Yeah. You guys, you know that we talked a little bit about those three questions we really want to focus on. Yeah. Leaf. You remember the three? Um. Someone fell in. Yeah. They are. The, like what they're gonna do that night. What yeah. Gonna what are they doing for New Year's? What are you doing to prepare for New Year's? What are your friends doing? What are your family doing? With, yeah. What if it, if New Year's was the end of the world? What would you want to be doing? Who would you want to be spending with too? That's a key part of it. And Who? what will the future be like? Yeah, and what's, I think we should elaborate on that too. If we get them going on that, if, they, if you get a good response on that, you should keep going with that one because there's unlimited possibilities. Hey, is this it? It'll be four. It's probably going to be another day. I hope God like kills us all or something, but I'll settle for a good riot. Hey, why do you hope that? Just breaking shit's fun. <laughs> I don't know, dude. My mom works for the bank. They say they got it pretty much so under, under, you know, under control. Just try and stray, stay away from all the like crazy religious fanatics and redneck militia men who are going to be out looking to shoot people or something. He's doing a duck. Ah. Oh, actually, yeah, me and my wife are buying a, a bunch of uh, like food storage things that are like last year, like for a year, like seven hundred dollars a piece. We're already buying two of them. I'd be with it first. If, nah, it wouldn't even matter if she was ugly. I'd be with the first girl I could find, actually. What do you think's got changed in the year two thousand? Uh, Nothing, noon. Jesus is gonna come, dude. <laughs> Jesus is coming. <laughs> Because if you think about it, dude, you know what I mean? If you got a gun, you don't have to have money or possessions or food. You just take it from other people, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I think things are going to be a lot worse in 50 years. Yeah. I think that overpopulation is a really big problem, and I think that uh, things are getting pretty bad in some other countries. Everything's, like you said, getting worse. Just pretty much see a breakdown coming. We're headed for... Apocalypse, I guess, would be the best word to describe it. I really don't think it's peaked. Yeah. I think I, we always think it's peaking. Like they thought it peaked in the Renaissance. That's they true. They thought it yeah. peaked in antiquity. The Roman Empire was supposed to be the last empire, great empire, and like a hardly was. Was there any moment when you were like scared of the guy you were interviewing? No, you were just cool the whole time. You weren't scared of the punks. Alright, tell me what you think of this. Dude, I think it's cool. I think I'm scared shitless to put a camera in anybody's face here, especially that fancy ass one. Kelby Court, I thought it was pretty fun. I don't know. I've always liked punks. They're pretty, like, honest people in their character. I wasn't so much scared as much as. <clears throat> no, I don't know. It was interesting to see. Did they have any strong opinions about the Y2K one way or another? Yes, they did. <laughs> have you done anything to prepare for the Millennium or Y2K? <laughs> <laughs> We have food storage and stuff, so in case the world ends, we can uh, be really prepared. I think it's all a big stupid thing. If people are like freaking out, it's only Mormons who are doing it. I think as long as we uh, just maintain this this uh, this sense of urgency, um, this problem will get fixed. My grandma and grandpa gave us food storage. It tastes yucky. And my grandma and grandpa buried money in their backyard, okay. and I can't find it. Well, I plan on. <laughs> the tent. <laughs> done some food storage and there's gonna be like a program and we're dancing at it. Being with my friends and going to the steak dance. I'm gonna sit on my ass. <laughs> I plan party. to say goodbye to my parents in case I die and then go party. <laughs> <laughs> if something happens because I don't want to go back to school for at least another month. First of all I think we're gonna look back on all the hype that we uh, built up around the year 2000 and how things just probably turned out all right. What would be different about society? Chaos. Everything would be going psycho. Every people would be like running around everywhere. I don't know. I'm kind of worried about like what the world's going to be like because right now we've got such like yeah. high crime rate and terrorism and stuff and in 50 years it's going to be so much worse. I don't know the end of the world kind of scares me. <laughs> Until my daughter's 18, I'm going to be a cosmetologist and own my own hair salon. And then when I'm 30,
34, I'm moving back to California. I'm gonna be a lawyer. I didn't know what to think of her, you know? She's dressed in all black, and so I felt she, I felt she was, I didn't find her very attractive, so I'm not sure what to think. She's fun, she's fun, she's fun, she's fun. Hello? I'm on my way, dude. I finally got my cat and my pet cat. Get bored? My family's done food storage too, and I'm just going to a party and a dance. scary just like this is like oats and flour and mm -hmm. rice mm -hmm. we got meat and pears and jam and sauce and this is all water down here under oh, this stuff under the, the shell sleeping bags <laughs> and then the rest is camping and hunting stuff so. I've seen the writing on the wall, and uh, I do think that uh, times will become pretty dire after uh, maybe a couple decades. I think that Mike thinks that the year 2000 was crap, and he thinks there's going to be an end. He doesn't know when, though. The more I thought about it, the more I thought about like how wrong it was uh, to just, like, like totally torture an animal against his will and not let him run around and be free. Like there's nothing wrong with eating meat, I think, but like the way that they treat cows and stuff, they keep them penned in for most of their lives, give them hormones until they pop and they just get really sick and uh, eating meat's just nasty. Pulpit! Assassins, you're a ninja, and you're and you like you run around like really silently, and you can climb up roofs, and you have to like catch guys unaware, and you can like sneak up behind them and cut their throats, and like blood gushes out, and they're like falling on the ground, and they twitch and everything. He tried to stab me with a fork <laughs> earlier. <laughs> he tried to wipe boogers all over me. <laughs> I do it like in intersections. I can't whistle since I got my tongue here. It's just the way I've always been. Like some days I won't feel like dressing punk. And some days it's like, eh, you know, I'm in the mood to relax. Yeah. Like I wear my Converse to work all the time. They're like, no tennis shoes. I sit on the telephone and I call people right as they're eating dinner. <laughs>
like doing crafts and art and all this other crap doesn't doesn't appeal to me because I don't feel I'm good at it. The only thing I'm good at is just like sketching in my notebook or whatever. She could play the flute and the piano real well. And so could my sister. They were both really into the piano and the flute. What happened to your sister? Um, she died a couple, a few years ago when I was about five. Isn't that when your mom died too? Yeah, they died. The weird thing was they died within the same month. I just do like weird uh, gun-toting vampire head-eating kind of weird old cartoons. I don't know. You should see some of the comic strips I draw. They're kind of they're weird. <laughs> Here's my room. Smells bad. Pretty barren. <laughs> comic book collection in the corner. CD, stereo, stuff, junks. Not a whole lot. I like to read a lot. There's all my books. I tend to shy away from John Grisham or Michael Crichton novels or what have you. A lot of the things that I read and stuff are are based a lot on like my own emotions and like my own thoughts and things. Want to or not? Uh, sure. Yeah, you can play. Or I don't know. Whichever one you. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not very good at it, but I guess I could try. Do you like having that small score or wish you had a bigger one? I don't know. Sometimes it's bad and sometimes it's good. Like, in terms of girls, there's not much of a selection. You start to wake up after associating with girls after a little while. You start to think, oh, I see, the whole sex is flawed. It's not just one or two. It's the whole damn kitten caboodle. I wrote this short story last night called The Sign of the Cross about an atheist that goes to Turkey to find the, uh, 
to disprove the uh, Noah's Ark. But I've been making... You guys heard of Dungeons and Dragons, right? Yeah. You know, all those nerds play it. Back in the 70s, a bunch of kids killed themselves over it. Mm. Well, I'm making, like, my own kind of based on ancient Japan kind of game that you can play. I don't like to watch the news. It's always bad. I try to... I, I'm not really interested in current events. I like Utah better than California, though. Okay. So the people here are more realistic. I try to keep my mind not closed, that way I can just, you know, not close. I, I, I try to keep open-minded just so I can absorb as much useful information as I can. Although I know now that everybody else, that everybody is in fact different, everybody is their own island. So my mom moved up here to get away from my dad. To keep my mom around, he said that he had a stroke. Half of his face was numb, everything. And like, they went into a neurologist. The neurologist was like, you need to leave this guy. Um, I think Christ will come return to the earth in a time when we least expect it. I see him once in a while. He always tries to preach to me. About what? He's like way more than that. Really? Ashley, God will love you. I'm like, dude. Alrighty, guys. Some people think the year 2000 is when it's going to happen, but I mean, he's going to, he'll come at a time when he thinks we're ready. And we're screwed. And all those people who go to church every Sunday wasted a shitload of time. <laughs> it could be, but we, we don't know when he's coming, so just, but I don't think it will be, because everybody thinks it will, but... But God is. There is a God. There's got to be a reason that we're here. Because everybody's going to go, oh, he's coming, i got to hurry and get good. I believe that there is a higher being. What do you believe it is? I don't know. I don't even come close. Too much shit to figure out first. Do you think about it often? They figure it's under control. They just to be prepared, cause just in case anything ever happens, just to always be prepared. If if uh, the computer shut down and everything like they say they could, then that would be a really good time for uh, the rapture to take place. I'd have to say that religion is a is an already set system of beliefs that uh, that somebody else has set up and that uh, you feel is a path to enlightenment, so if it works out for you, then you should do it. And all the Christians would be raptured up to heaven, and the Holy Spirit would go with them, and then sometime after that, <clears throat> the Antichrist would come in and the seven-year tribulation would begin. I don't know, I have a hard time following any any set uh, belief system. It's it's a lot better for me to just uh, not have any morals whatsoever. Is it what happens during the tribulation? It's really bad. Well, only three things have to take place. It's in the Bible. Three things have to take place. Israel has to be reinstated as a state, which it did, which it happened in 1948. Then Israel has to take over uh, ownership or command of Jerusalem, which it did to, after the 1967 war. And then the third thing that has to happen is the temple has to be rebuilt. <clears throat> Two of those things have happened. The temple hasn't been rebuilt. Right now there's a mosque on that site. But when the temple is rebuilt on, at that time and the Antichrist makes his pact with Israel, with the Jews, the seven-year tribulation will begin.
I'm an atheist. Uh, all the patterns that I see in nature seems to point to either that God does not exist or God simply does not like me or something. And after seven years, the second coming of Christ would happen. And that would be the end. And then the millennium, the real millennium, would begin. The thousand year reign of Christ. This is the stupidest decade ever. Why is that? It's a combination of all the crap that we had in the 70s and the 80s meshed into one big decade. I'm not a computer type person, and it's sad to think that the future job market will be solely based on computers. I'm going to be a very poor, poor man. Tell me about your plans after high school. Right now, I'm just trying to get back in. Um, I start classes in, on the 24th, and I'm just going to take one a day. I've always wanted to go to Cuba. I always thought Cuba was an interesting country, and I always wanted to go there. It's too much of a pain in the butt to have a kid go to school, have a job, plus go to college. So I figured I'm just gonna do cosmetology on a salon here, and then try and open one up in California, and that should pay for my tuition. I'll live off grants and stuff until. Well, I'm just going to have Linda and I may have one more when I finally get married, but that's it. You know, I'm not going to have 18 million kids. I stay away from, like, email and all this other stuff because, like, all these people email you all these, like, little hello notes, hello and goodbye. <laughs> yeah. It completely destroys intimate conversation between two people. I want to be a nurse. I wa wanted to be a pediatrician, but that's, like... Ten years of college. I want to be a stripper at night and pro surfer during the day. I think the medical field is probably like a good prospect for the future because you know there's always people be people to help you. And, yeah. And so it's not going to be one of those jobs that you're also not going to be able to find. I don't have the body to be a stripper. <laughs> one. Second, I don't have the time to be a stripper. Third. Like I hope to be a writer or a artist of some sort, and I don't know. Probably go to college. I'll probably go to Snow College for a while and mm -hmm. and get my general. And then I'll either transfer to Snow South in Richfield and work on my medical degree there. Or I will um, do my nursing degree through the Weber State Outreach Program that we got down here at our high school at our hospital. It would drive me nuts not having one that it would drive, I'd go nuts and go bonkers. What do you think of the millennium? I'm trying to feel something about it. <laughs> I have very great difficulty summoning up the right emotion. Don't you, possums? Uh, I am so full of joy that uh, my body is uh, steering uh, Everything, every, every organ over my body is moving in a very bad way. And right now there is a glitch in the Eiffel Tower and they are frantic. Who do you want to have a New Year's kiss with? No comment. Mary Beth Lahoo. Yeah. Who do you want to have a New Year's kiss with? Okay, everyone. Who do you want? Pretty old. Pretty neat, huh, Jason? Yeah. fireworks but here in Taiwan they did something interesting flying the sky lanterns for centuries they were used as the way to communicate and then we went to Indonesia as well <laughs> no I think it's gonna blow up on US <laughs> whoa <laughs> whoa <laughs> 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 
said, never in my life could I imagine that there would be such a wild, wide open, democratic, free speech kind of celebration as there is tonight here in Moscow. We want some contrast in this broadcast, mm. uh, going from midnight in Moscow to midnight in Ali a day. Just listen. Years of terrorism and had a magnificent show before a crowd that was overwhelmingly Palestinian. Inizia in questo momento. I wish a happy new year to everyone in the light which shines out of Bethlehem. Half the world is like caved in. It's like, it's just like mountain and western standard time just waiting to die. <laughs> Time zone celebrates. Times Square seems intact this far. Well, America's really a lot more reliant on computers than a lot of other countries. Well, I know, but it, it just happened in New York. New York has more computers and stuff, I'm sure, than in Utah. <laughs> when is it 12? Not by my watch. Not yet? Oh, no, it's only like five more minutes. <laughs> so again, the torch is passed to a new century of young Americans. It's just another, it's just another millennium. Nothing's happened either. Six, six, five, four, three, two, one. Happy New Year. You can still see far out into the horizon, and we are still intact. Y2K has not been the great disaster many feared would happen to governments and businesses now dependent on computer technology. So maybe the world's going to blow up next year. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, no one's ready. Yeah. The upcoming generation has been labeled as detached and selfish, products of a media and technology saturated age. Like these labels, the expected catastrophes of Y2K were products of this age. In the world's eyes, Y2K threatened to be the actualization of these fears, a loss of humanity. But what does this generation really feel about the impending doom of technology? In a world of increasing technological mania, this generation saw through the millennial veneer. Mike, Ashley, and Janelle represent a cross-section of today's youth. Despite their diverse backgrounds and beliefs, each clearly desires a connection of human relationships. Like Y2K, these teenagers invite us to question the mythology that technology will lead to dehumanization. I'm kind of gullible, so I just believe anything. Like, one minute I'm like, oh, nothing's going to happen, we're not going to land, blah, blah, blah. Then, like, my parents were watching the news or something, I just happened to walk in the room and, like, someone said, we're all going to die, so we're all going to die. You know? the lights will return. I was kind of hoping that like a riot or something would happen because then maybe I could like, I don't know, go lose some nice sofa or something. I have to say that Isaac installed a fair amount of fear in me towards the end there. He had me convinced that things were going downhill. I didn't think anything really would get, was going to happen. Um, maybe a few computer glitches or some weird stuff like that, but I really didn't think all that much was going to happen, but I was kind of disappointed when nothing did. <laughs> 